Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of a horror films from 2015, titled The Exorcism of Molly Hartley. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The film opens with a priest named Father Barrow, walking into a room to assist his fellow priest, Father James, in performing an exorcism on a pregnant woman. While Father James is looking away, the possessed woman begs Father Barrow to untie her binds, because she is in labor. Feeling sorry for the woman, Father Barrow gives in and does as she asks. But then, the possessed woman moves to attack him instead. To protect Father Barrow, the other priest jumps to his aid and they fall through the window. Father Barrow looks down in horror at the sight of the two lying dead. Because of his mistake, Father Barrow gets taken to a Catholic-run mental institution. He then gets introduced to Henry Davis, a chaplain who informs him that the Vatican has stripped him off of his titles, and has revoked his priestly rights. We then move to the next scene, in which a woman named Molly Hartley is celebrating her 24th birthday with her friends at the club. Molly Hartley hooks up with a couple in that club, and starts dancing with them. She ends up going home, and has a threesome with the couple. The next morning, Molly wakes up by the sound of someone knocking on the door. Two police officers show up at the door, to inform her that her neighbors complained about noises coming out of her room last night. As the officers step in to take a look, we can notice that something's off, because it seems that Molly is hearing strange noises coming from the wall. Not long after, one of the officers finds dead bodies lying in the bathtub. They put Molly in handcuffs, and begin questioning her, but she doesn't seem to recall murdering the two. She also appears to have a deeper voice, and hears ominous voices that the police cannot hear. After seeing her strange behavior, the police put Molly in a mental facility for the time being. Coincidentally, this is the same mental institution that Father Barrow is currently in. It is clear that something evil follows Molly into the facility, because just as Father Barrow finished his prayers. At night, Molly hears an ominous voice call her name from inside the drain. She leans close to it and says, We're getting stronger. And later when she falls asleep, a bug crawls inside her nose, prompting her to panic and be haunted by the ominous voices once more. In the morning, Molly gets a visitor, Dr. Lori Hawthorne. The doctor is assigned to evaluate her progress weekly until she is ready to step out of the facility. As the doctor sits down, she mentions about how Molly's father killed her mother in the past, insinuating that the incident may play a part in Molly's so-called mental breakdown. Molly denies this and insists that she is not insane, she is possessed. As if to prove her point, this happens right after. Molly proceeds to threaten the doctor, by saying that she killed a counselor back in high school. As a result, the skeptical doctor appears shaken when she steps out of Molly's room. She spends the rest of her day researching about Molly's past. The next morning, Dr. Hawthorne is having a session with a pale-looking Molly. At this point, Molly starts to act strangely toward the doctor, until Molly suddenly throws up. Molly then proceeds to scream and twist her body the way possessed people do, which understandably creeps out the doctor. Later that night, Father Barrow is reciting his evening prayers. On the other side of the facility, the possessed Molly is disturbed by this. So she begins banging her head against the wall. Not long after, Dr. Hawthorne and a guard are confounded by the discovery that the rest of the patients at the facility are now banging their heads against the wall. The doctor stops in front of Molly's room, and takes her away from the rest of the patients. Molly is now held inside a padded room. The doctor then visits her and begins to try rationalizing what's going on. After reading Molly's files, she deduces that Molly is simply having another psychotic break, after the last one she had back when she was 18 years old. The possessed Molly begins saying that the reason why she's being possessed again now, this happens because it's been six years, six months and almost six days since the last time she got possessed, which means that something big is coming a few days from now. Molly begins thrashing her body like crazy, and begins screaming. He's coming! 
Later that night, a voice calls for Father Barrow. It is coming from Molly's room. On the next day, Dr. Hawthorne walks up to check up on Molly, and finds her hanging upside down. Even though she is scared, the movie tells her to step inside and walk closer, and then... The doctor screams for help, and two guards rush to apprehend Molly. Desperate, the doctor finds Father Barrow, and begs for his help. Even the doctor has now moved past her skepticism and believes that Molly is actually possessed. Father Barrow argues that he is of no help, because he had his title revoked. They go for a walk to talk further, and we learn that the church no longer teaches priests how to perform exorcisms, which means very few people know how to do it anymore, and one of them is Father Barrow. The two stop walking to find a flock of dead crows lying across the yard, and then turn to a sight of a woman standing outside a window. But before they get to do anything, Father Barrow now realizes how dear the situation is. He goes to visit Molly to assess the situation at hand, and is welcomed with a sight of a disfigured-looking Molly, who is clearly possessed. The demon introduces himself as Legion, and undermines Father Barrow's abilities, because he is no longer a priest. Father Barrow promises that he's going to save Molly, and leaves. Afterwards, the shaken Father Barrow has a chat with Dr. Hawthorne. The doctor tells him about Molly past, in which Molly was an academically average student, until something changed when she turned 18, where she started getting straight A's, graduated magna cum laude from business school, and now has a very successful career. The doctor finds the major shift peculiar. Feeling conflicted, Father Barrow consults to Chaplain Davis about this. Regardless of the church's definite disapproval if they ever find out about this, Chaplain Davis is completely supportive, and hands Father Barrow his old exorcism kit. Later that night, Father Barrow begins reciting prayers, and splashing holy water around the premises, before going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the possessed Molly. He begins the exorcism while the demon talks back, and teases him. At one point, the demon even goes as far as taking the form of the pregnant woman he once failed to exorcise. Still determined, Father Barrow moves closer, but then, he gets bitten. A strange mark begins appearing on Molly's forehead after, and Father Barrow presses his cross to her face, which hurts the demon. Father Barrow retreats to the restroom to clean up the blood from his face, and dress his bite wound. He then goes to the prayer room to clear his head, but as he looks outside the window, He quickly returns to Molly's room to resume the exorcism. But the demon fights back. He flings Father Barrow's cross to the wall as well as the rest of his exorcism kit. He then makes Father Barrow choke himself, but Father Barrow manages to regain control, and reaches for his tiny cross again. Father Barrow gains the upper hand this time, and the exhausted demon lays back down. The priest falls on his knees at the torturous sound the demon makes. Later, we see Father Barrow recuperating in his room, right when Dr. Hawthorne walks him to tell him words of encouragement. On the next day, Father Barrow returns to Molly's room to find the demon rejoicing, because today is exactly six years, six months, and six days since the last time he possessed Molly. You know what this is? It's time, Barrow. Father Barrow holds up a fancy box, presumably to suck the demon in like a genie, but the possessed Molly starts freeing herself from her binds instead, and this happens. As the possessed Molly gets lifted up by the alien light, the mysterious box slowly opens. Molly then begins spitting a bug, and then more. All of the bugs start flying right into the box, and Molly floats back down to the bed. Pastor Barrow soaks the box in holy water, and walks up to Molly. He carries her outside the room, where Dr. Hawthorne awaits them with relief. On the next scene, Father Barrow visits the recovering Molly, and she voices her gratitude. However, as the priest walks back through the halls later, he senses that all the residents are staring at him in a strange way. Back inside her ward, Molly also notices how the other patients are staring at her as well. Father Barrow gets driven away from the facility, and notices that the case that holds the demon and rattles slightly. 
He hands the case to Chaplain Davis, but notices something amiss. Chaplain Davis owns what looks like a devil's book. Suspicious, Father Barrow asks about the book, and the chaplain simply smiles and invites him to have a chat. The chaplain explains about the devil's symbol, which consists of the letter LVTYN, and stands for Leviathan. Father Barrow suddenly recalls the strange mark that appeared on Molly's forehead during the exorcism. The chaplain further explains about a ritual to welcome the devil into earth, which involves murdering a woman who gave birth to the devil into this world, which in this case would be Molly Hartley. Father Barrow rushes to check on the case to make sure that the box that keeps the demon is still there, but to his surprise, the box is gone, and... Back inside the facility, Molly Hartley gets woken up by a strange noise. She goes to check on another patient but then... A bag gets put over her head. She gets taken and dragged away. Meanwhile, Father Barrow wakes up inside a locked room. He looks through the small window in his door to ask for help, but the patient outside starts convulsing, while the others lie motionless. As it turns out, they have all died from drinking some sort of poison. Dr. Hawthorne arrives at the facility, and is confused to find it empty. She receives an ominous phone call, and a guard comes up to her in a sketchy manner, rendering her scared. At the same time, a guard also comes up to Father Barrow, and asks him to follow by threatening him with a gun. Dr. Hawthorne gets taken to a room, and a bag gets put over her head. She fights back and stabs the guard with a scissor, killing him. The doctor then sneaks away, while Father Barrow follows the guard to attend the ritual. In the basement, the ritual has begun, with the chaplain leading it. Father Barrow enters the room, and the chaplain informs him that Father Barrow is the demon's father, because he also helped gave birth to the demon through his exorcism. The chaplain then moves to stab Molly, and Dr. Hawthorne has come to the rescue. Father Barrow rushes to untie Molly, and she immediately reaches for the blade to stab Chaplain Davis. You have all betrayed me! The three make their escape, but they get pinned down by the guards. It seems that all hope is lost. Luckily, the police arrive just in time. The three of them are now saved. In the next scene, Molly gets taken to an ambulance, with Father Barrow telling her that she is safe now. He and Dr. Hawthorne watch her leave in relief. Before the film ends, we get taken to a scene where one of the devilish bugs enter a school bus, and settles on a girl's hair. Will she or won't she get possessed? Okay guys. That's all the recap for the exorcism of Molly Hartley. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.